King Edward VIII, who died from throat cancer 51 years ago, spent the final weeks of his life bleeding like a lamb for his wife of 35 years Wallace Simpson, his night nurse claimed. In the three or so weeks leading up to his death spent at the couple's home, known as Villa Windsor in France, Edward was under the care of Julie Chattered Alexander. The then 26-year-old Ms. Alexander, who found the Duke of Windsor very sweet, was shocked that Wallace failed to check in on her dying husband. This was despite the fact that Wallace was at home, in her bedroom on the same floor as Edward's, she said. In fact, Wallace never came in to see Edward and Ms. Alexander said the monarch, whose reign lasted just under a year, ended up dying in her arms. In Andrew Morton's 2018 book Wallace in Love, Ms. Alexander said, Wallace, never came to see him or kiss him goodnight or see how he was. Not once. Poor fellow. He would call her name over and over Wallace, 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 Wallace or darling, 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 darling. It was pitiful and pathetic. Just so sad like a lamb calling for its mother. According to Mr. Morton's biography, Wallace had feelings for her friend Catherine Moore's husband, Herman Rogers, the World War I veteran and businessman. In fact, he claims that there was a very odd triangular relationship between Wallace, Edward and Herman with the Duke said to be more like a child than a partner to Wallace. He continued, Wallace, told Herman's second wife, Lucy Vaughan, that he was the only man she had ever truly loved. Herman acted at times more like Wallace's husband than her friend. And Edward acted more like her little boy than her husband. When Edward finally succumbed to death in the early hours of May 28, 1972, Ms. Alexander remembered pitying the former king who she felt had died in the wrong woman's arms. The nurse, who like Wallace grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, recalled thinking, the poor Duke of Windsor died in the arms of the wrong Baltimore woman. Don't miss! Queen broke Edward Vives' heart for denying his dying wish, claim, analysis, Edward VIII and Wallace Simpson's Paris to be turned into museum, report, Sussex's risk repeating mistakes of ex-King and Wallace Simpson expert, insight, while some accounts claim that Edward died in Wallace's arms, the couple's secretary John Utter told writer Hugo Vickers that she was asleep when he died, adding that he had had to wake her to break the news. When Edward abdicated decades earlier, he told the nation and the world that he did so for the woman that he loved. It follows that many believe his and Wallace's was one of the great love affairs of the 20th century. Yet historian Andrew Loney, writing in his 2021 book Trader King, highlighted that others felt the American socialite was trapped in a marriage that she had never wanted. According to their friend Mona Eldridge, quoted in Mr. Loney's book, they both lived unhappy lives. She said, the Duke and Duchess led totally self-centered lives, there was no consideration for anything but the gratification of their own needs. The life they led was born out of disappointment, frustration and unfulfilled expectations. Similarly, Mr. Loney writes that the Duke and Duchess's marriage was quite the contrary to a great romance. He said Wallace was emotionally blackmailed into marriage, only sticking it out because she had no other option. He continued, she had been attracted to him as Prince of Wales and King, but that attraction had waned after he had given up his throne, leading to a mixture of guilt pity, dissatisfaction, boredom and irritation. The affairs, the constant shopping, the travel and entertaining were an attempt to provide some stimulation in a life with little meaning and with a man she did not love. 
Wallace died several years after Edward from bronchial pneumonia in Paris at the age of 89 on April 24, 1986. Andrew Morton's Wallace in Love, The Untold True Passion of the Duchess of Windsor, published by Michael O'Mara in 2018, is available here. Andrew Lowney Strader King, The Scandalous Exile of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, published by Blink Publishing in 2021, is available here.